Hey guys, I'm back to you today with a, another manga and anime review, this time manga. Um, 20th Century Boys by Naoki Urasawa. Again, back to top form. Urasawa's work is just phenomenal. Um, and uh, 20th Century Boys is uh, one of his more recent ones. Um, I think he finished in 2006 or something like that. Um, published by uh, Viz. Um, it's got a, a nicer book design to it, um, as opposed to um, Monster, which are just like the the basic sort of um, graphic novels, the smaller Tankabon. Um, these ones have got like the uh, the cover flaps and stuff Ooh, that way about the author and stuff. Basically, um, it's it's another suspense um, thriller. Um, it centers around the uh, main protagonist is. Uh, here, Endo Kenji, um, and uh, it follows three timelines in the story. Um, it starts off in 1997, where Kenji's just basically living like a, a normal life. Um, he's, you know, he's a failed musician. Um, he's lost, you know, a touch of like most of his childhood friends and stuff. Um, and uh, he, um, he he gets a letter. Um, because he, he finds out that one of his childhood friends, Donkey, has committed suicide. And um, he gets a letter from him, um, just basically saying, oh, you know, it's been a long time, you know, how's it going? Uh, do you remember this symbol? And uh, the letter um, has that symbol um, inside it. And um, basically that symbol, um, when Kenji and all of his friends were younger, they, uh, they formulated this childish plan that uh, you know, one day in the twentieth century, they're going to save the world from um, like an evil terrorist, like an an evil madman who's going to destroy the world. And uh, Kenji and his and his friends wrote this uh, book of prophecy, and um, like basically foretold all these events that are going to lead up to the end of the world. And um, anyway, the story goes on, and uh, turns out that there's this guy called the friend who is like the leader of this almost religious self-help cult um, and all of these um, prophecies and things that were wrote in the book of prophecy back way 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 back in like the 1960s I think it was after, I believe it was like 1969 that Kenji and his friends wrote this book um, but basically everything that was written um, things are actually starting to happen um, leading up to the 20th century like it's 1997 and these minor events that are coming into play um, are starting to happen and um, Kendry suspects that uh, the friend events um, and it, it's it's so so good because from the get-go you just you have you have no idea what's going on the now Kurosawa just got a, a real way of just throwing like like minute details to kind of keep you going along and keep you you know engrossed within the story um, but it's uh, basically what Kenji does. Um, he rounds up like all his friends, um, who are also just you know living their own lives. You know they've either got married and had kids, or you know the, the they're in successful careers, or they're just basically living their own life. You know out of touch with each other because it's, it's years and years and years. You know he rounds them all up for like a you know a nineteen sixty nine reunion, and um, he. Uh, Basically, um, nobody remembers um, this symbol that they've come up with. You know, they're all struggling to remember. You know, oh, you know, but it's so long. It's like you know, forty years ago, nearly. Um, how are we supposed to remember? You know, I, I, I show all, all this in just a joke. Kenji and Kenji's like, no, I'm, I'm, I, th I think something's something's wrong here. You know, our, our friend has mysteriously committed suicide, and you know, some something's something's going wrong here. You know, something's um, something's amiss, and. Uh, Turns out that um, the friend might actually be um, one of Kenji's childhood friends, because uh, he keeps getting these clues, you know, um, suggesting that the friend, you know, knows him. And um, it's it's like a it's like a massive game of cat and mouse. It, it's just genius. Um, I don't want to give away any like major plot points or spoilers or anything, but um, like I said before, um, the, the main story follows uh, three timelines. Like first in uh, 1969. Um, where Kenshin and his friends are all children, and you know, the, you know, writing the book of prophecy, and you know, basically just dossing around, you know, in summertime, just doing what kids do, basically, 
then in 1997, where all these events um, from the Book of Properties start happening. And uh, then it, it, it fasts forward in time. And um, the story starts off again in uh, 2014, where uh, this this little baby here, um, Kana, who's Kenji's niece, um, he, Kenji's basically looking after her because uh, his sister, uh, Kariko, has gone, has gone missing. She basically um, gave away Kana to Kenji and palmed her off to Kenji and his mum because uh, she had important business to attend to and, you know, that that's not really told, you know, who she is or, you know, what she needed to do until later towards the end of the series. Um, so, yeah, um, like halfway through the story, um, minor spoiler here, um, uh, the, the the main focus of the story, like, Kana becomes the main protagonist um, and she kind of leads the story up until, like, the end of the series. So it, it's got a really nice way of, like, moving around the story and, and switching between characters and, you know, the, the character development, that's one thing as well. The character development in this series is just fantastic. Um, Kana just starts off as, you know, uh, a sweet child who, you know, really looks up to her, un to, to her uncle, you know, obviously her uncle's like a failed rock musician, but Kana's like, you know, almost his like number one fan, which is really sweet. Um, and it's really great to see how her character changes throughout the series, you know, from going from this little sweet young girl to, um, you know, uh, questioning herself and who she is and how she plays um, a role in, you know, everything that's happening. Um, you know, with the friend and the friend organization and stuff, and you know how she can, what what she can do basically to bring them down. Um, I, I won't give away anything about you know how she's relevant to the story or anything, but you know she plays a massive role in the story. Um, but basically, uh, just give you a gist of the characters we've got. Uh, obviously, Endo Kenji here, who uh, is the main guy. His uh, his best friend Maru, um, Yoshitsune. Um, who else have we got? Uh, oh, here's a good one. Here's a good list. Um, this is them in 1997. Um, obviously, we've got Kenji again. That's Kana when she's like three years old. Um, Yukiji, um, Ocho, and but that, that's more or less the whole group, nearly. I can't really get... Here we go. Yoshitsune again, Maruo. Wait, Maruo is there. Uh, Fukube, um, Monchan, and... Uh, yeah, it's just, oh, it definitely is one of my favourite series. Um, I haven't read Monster yet because I've still got three more volumes of that to get. So, you know, I've, I've heard that Monster is um, still a lot better than this. And um, I'm still to read Pluto as well. But, um, yeah, I, I highly, highly recommend 20th Century Boys. The last two volumes, actually. Um, let's get them off my pile here. Yeah, the last two volumes... Um, the, the series is renamed, but it is, re it is relevant to the story. Um, it gets renamed to 20th, 21st Century Boys. Uh, Shadow, what are you doing? Get out the window. Dog. But yeah, um, 21st Century Boys, and that that's really where the story comes to a head. And uh, it almost goes just crazy. It's such a crazy series. Because it, it manages to mix like elements of real life and slice of life with uh, elements of sci-fi and horror and supernatural it's just it's a real nice mix of things but it seems so realistic um it's not over the top of anything i mean if you've read a Narusawa work then you'll know like how he can drive a story and uh, how he can just implement you know certain things like you know, melodrama and you know just just those are just realistic and very relatable to just as people themselves because they are just generally normal people who are living generally normal lives until basically shit hits the fan um and yeah that, that's basically all i have to say about the series i don't really have any sort of um particular gripes about it other than you know it can be hard to follow sometimes because it's such a long series i mean there's like 24 volumes in in total um if you're going to read this series it's best to kind of like dedicate yourself to it rather rather than reading you know different manga at the same time you know if you're going to read this just basically read it all the way through you know just take your time with it and just just take in the story because there, there is a lot to take and there's lots of characters there's there's lots of different plot points lots of twists there, there is so many twists in this you know so, oh I, I wish i could say but i don't want to spoil it you know you just have to read it so yep yeah, that's it 20th and 
21st Century Boys by Naoki Rosawa. Pick it up, guys. You know, sustain the industry. So, yeah, I'm Hellnon1990 signing out. Thank you.